Reginald Cherubin of the St. Lucia X Services League expressed appreciation to those who took time off on a Sunday to honor the heroes who fought to secure their freedoms in the great wars of the 20th century. We are very happy to invite you here this morning. I'm very glad that you have given us support in the past. I hope you brought your puppies to help the poor ex-servicemen. I want to thank the representative for England, the English party, uh, what's his name? Oh, yes. Last year he told us that he's going to give us a little pittance. And we received that we want to tell you we are grateful. According to World War II veteran Haynes Cyril, the number of St. Lucian World War II veterans who saw action overseas in Europe is dwindling rapidly. And both of us are in the 90s. One is in Birmingham, and your humble servant in St. Lucia will be 98 tomorrow if I spare. I must tell you, the contingent which left here, St. Lucia, that was about 30 plus, for the theater of war, has done well. The president of the St. Lucia X Services League, Hain Cyril, regaled an audience wrapped with attention with war stories and the men and women he proudly served with, especially in his unit during war years. He recalled that St. Lucians and other Windward Islanders who signed up for the British West Indian were greatly underestimated during basic training and were not given a fighting chance. But despite the odds, he said, their valor was unquestionable and served with distinction. We were the last battalion to be organized for World War II. And we were, what you call, underestimated. He said two years training is not sufficient to lead men into action. The, I, the countries like Jamaica, Trinidad and Tobago, even little Barbados, and so on. But what happened? We were fortunate. After our training, in fact, the third training we had for the eighth year of war, a Grenadian, a corporal Grenadian, was the top man. Haynes said it was not just about small unit tactics of fire and maneuver, but the band of brothers who stuck together in the European theater. Representatives of the generations of Europeans, the greatest generation freed from tyranny, say they remain <laughs> grateful. Lawrence Binion tells us the living owe it to those who can no longer speak to tell their story for them. So we gather today to remember these stories of men and women, the vast majority of whom we never knew, but to whom we all owe an unpayable debt. Men and women like President Cyril from St. Lucia and the rest of the Caribbean, but also the Commonwealth who served alongside Great Britain and Northern Ireland and her allies in two world wars. We remember for peace, they were willing to sacrifice their tomorrow for our today. In doing so, <clears throat> excuse me, in doing so, they changed the world for better and for all. Their legacy is peace, freedom and democracy. Remembrance Day marks the day World War I ended at 11 a.m. on the 11th day of the 11th month in 1918. It is observed annually on the 11th of November. Joachim Duplessis, HTS News Force.